Changing Times, Changing Worlds, bringing you Otherworldly, our Wednesday show. Uh, we try and get speakers and topics to enlighten and enliven your night and open your eyes to the hidden aspects of reality that many will choose to deny. But we don't because we're highly superior people, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm the host, Chippecon. And tonight I haven't got guests. You guys are, are on the, uh, you're on tap tonight. Because we want to be talking about uh, life hacks. L life hacks are things that are um, make your life easier. Uh, they, I looked up some definition. They're tricks, shortcuts, novelty methods for, to make daily activities more efficient, easier, increase productivity or efficiency. Um, and and frankly, talking shop is kind of what Changing Times, Changing Worlds is about, because once you have decided, accepted that the world is more than just the physical, uh, then we are, then, then the, the world opens up a lot. And so now we have, once, once you know that we are, uh, there, you can do things that aren't right there. Then, then you're. Uh, then we got so much more that we can do. Uh, the initial things that that I am going to start us out with uh, is that um, inner, you can use your energy to put up a shield. I think most people, when they start talking to witches and other people like that hear about energy shields, keep out all that negative energy. Have, has it ever occurred to you to use it to keep out UV? Uh, many years ago, I, I read that the, um, in some of the ingredients in sunblock are really not good for you. And most, most of them aren't. And so it's like, okay, but you know what? I can shield. And I had already started using shields, which really annoys many people around me, uh, to keep out mosquitoes and black flies. You have to learn to remember to keep it up or set it so that it stays up. But these are things people can learn to do. Once you have learned to put up a shield, which usually doesn't take a whole lot more than picturing it, I uh, when I'm thinking of shields, a lot of times I, I think the magic words, shields up Mr. Sulu, and picture the Tholian web being drawn, which is fine if you're putting up a shield that lets some things in and keeps other things out. Um, not so much for UV, but against with UV, you don't want it to be everything. You want it to be, you want it to keep out the harmful stuff. And I'm going to share a story about a friend of mine who runs a local health food store. He's a shaman. And he went to his dentist and his dentist said, you haven't had your dental x-rays in over 10 years. I really want to take some films. And he said, I don't need that stuff. And he said, well, I would feel better. And he said, well, you know, fine. But it's, a, it, it, you know, it's not a good idea to add. He said, it's not as much as it doesn't do anything it um, <clears throat> it's it's perfectly harmless, and so he said, "Well, if it's as long as it's perfectly harmless." And he so the nurse comes in with the le the lead apron, and he says, "Oh, I don't need that." And he said, "What well, you have to have it?" And he said, "Well, he says it's perfectly harmless." And she went to the dentist, and the dentist said, "It's harmless enough. Don't bother." And he put up a shield. He said, "Let nothing harmful get through my shield." And she took the x-rays and he came in after looking at, the dentist came in after looking and said, what did you do? <laughs> and what he did was he put up a shield and said, nothing harmful. And so the x-rays didn't get in. <laughs> oh. So, and that, that is, uh, that, that, that is a, a kind of a show-offy thing that you can do if you if you're really good. I'm not quite that good, but I haven't I've had one sunburn since I learned to do that 15 or 20 years ago and that was when I forgot to put it up when I went out. And uh, 
so it, it, it's, it's a good thing. And remember, same thing with bugs. If you're being surrounded by bugs, you know, just put up a shield keep and, and drive the people around you crazy because they'll say, well, why are they coming around me and not coming around you? Because they learned to shield. <laughs> when enough people are doing this, then there will be less resistance to the, uh, to the concept. Uh, similar in form, and remember, I, was, I just said the basics of a shield is visualization. Another visualization, I was out walking one night and the sun came down and I was more than a half mile from home and getting annoyingly chilled. So I visualized a sweater and I put the sweater on and, you know, with the entire everything to put a sweater on and allowed myself to feel it and warmed right up and I was able to walk home comfortably. These are things we don't often don't think of. And I think that that is, yes, I like the garlic hint. Uh, let me uh, share what's on the, in the, in the chat that if you, um, it's, I find energy shields are not particularly effective against light wavelengths or eat, eat too much garlic, it changes your chemistry, yes. Also, eating a lot of sugar makes you more attractive to uh, bugs. So there you go. If you like your Coke, you might want to invest in more shields. Uh, but garlic is an antibiotic. It is an antifungal. It is an antiviral. It is a anti-parasitic. Garlic is God's gift to humanity. And uh, gosh, I love that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going mm -hmm. to... Has anybody else got something they want to say, or I will take off on that? You know I can talk for an hour. On garlic? I'll just chime in when I need to. Okay, well, anybody chime in when you need to, because I'm not the most... Um, my daughter put two googly eyes, little adhesive googly eyes, up on either side of my camera to help me look into the camera. <laughs> So that, uh, uh, that's one way of doing it. There's an, it's another very odd life hack. So, <laughs> um, so I might miss. Uh, uh, so just unmute yourself and, and jump in. Okay. If 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 you have something apt to say about it, um, but one of the things that I think that you may or may not have heard is that plants come to you. I have, I have talked to plants, and I know that makes me sound a little bit odd, but once you have, uh, once you've learned how, it just, it, it's just life. Um, plants tend to appear where they are needed. Plants apparently are okay with being ingested. I think that maybe because plants are a projection of a greater, that each plantain plant is a projection of the spirit of plantain. And uh, so plants will come to you when you need them. So if some plant appears suddenly in your yard, pull out your herbal identifying plants book and find out what it does, because it may have come just to help you. We suddenly had um, mugwort suddenly grow up all over our yard. So I looked at it and I said, what's it for? It's for indigestion, insomnia, and, and anxiety. It's like, oh, now the question is, which one of the people in our family <laughs> did it come for? <laughs> so we, It's uh, also pretty good. Uh, mug, I find mugwort tea also is good if I'm trying to scry. Hmm. Uh, and I may Susan, be one of the few people who can stand the taste of the stuff. Actually, since we've started liking it, uh, it's it has. Uh, I've gotten rather fond of it. Okay. I, I I was surprised. Of course, now that I have, um, now that I associate Colt's foot with unstuffing my head, when I drink Colt's foot, the flavor to me says. Mm. Uh, says uh, 
you're about to get feel better. So that's definitely always going to, to have an impact. Also, and if you don't know this, this is important. Even tea aficionados know, like it's three minutes for their sorts. There's different you pour for black tea you pour the water boiling on top of the tea for for green tea you wait, wait till it's off the boil and then you pour it on uh then you so diff, slightly different temperatures slightly different steeping times for a medicinal effect you will put most tea in boiling water for 10 minutes if you want to drink it for the flavor drink it uh you can get a milder one by doing it three minutes so if you do your uh wormwood every day or twice a day at three minutes then that will be a gentle way of getting it without having to have the medicinal <laughs> 10 minutes you take if you take normal black tea or earl gray or whatever and soak it for uh for 10 minutes it's kind of be nasty yeah. Well, you're getting all the caffeine out. In fact, the very first experiment I did in my first class in organic chemistry was measuring the melting point of caffeine. And we got it by putting a bunch of black tea in a pot and boiling it for 15 minutes. And you mentioned little life hacks. My tea life hack is, did you know that? If you take a two cup Pyrex measuring cup and you pour boiling water in it up to the two cup line, it instantly drops the temperature down to the temperature to brew green tea. So the power actually measure that much of a heat sink. Yeah. And the fun thing was that it made it the right temperature, yeah. which was 180 degrees for the tea I was making. But yeah, you talk about little things like that to make your life simpler. Bennett? If you go. Oh, is that a cup, question? One of the Cup line, boiling water, it comes to right temperature for green tea. Uh, Thor, is that you? You're Thor, are you talking to the uh, show or are you talking to your roommate? I was talking to my wife, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you control your mute and, and turn it on when you want to talk to us. But, well, but if, they, for, if it comes to you. Hmm? Okay. As for tea, um, I like to use a, uh oh, wait a minute. Hold on, I gotta turn my camera on. Uh, we wondered where you were. <laughs> I use a Vietnamese coffee maker. Hmm. Ooh, okay. And I put my loose leaf tea in here and use a regular teapot and pour it very slowly. And it comes out perfect. Not too bitter, not black water it comes out nice not too bitter is a big deal because no matter what i do to make tea somehow i always manage to get it to be bitter especially with green tea i must have like a, some kind of reverse touch on the stuff well, I enjoy that too. means well with the green tea that means it, that it's steeped a little too long if it's bitter. right or you can just add like if you're making a uh, eight cup or 12 cup thing of green tea, then add like uh, a tablespoon or two of sugar to, to nip it, so to speak. Yeah, I've done, I've, I've, I prefer honey, but um, yeah. Honey is better. If I really want green tea, I go to a Chinese restaurant. They never, it never comes out bitter there. You yeah. know, their secret is, their secret is that's what they do. They add for or like an eight to 12 cup serving of green tea, they add about two tablespoons of sugar. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I, yeah. I like the, um, one of uh, my daughter's friends has a teapot, an electric teapot, and you push either the black tea, green tea, or white tea button to take oh, it I to the wanted that pot. <laughs> so may, Mary maybe Ellis that, has one of those. Maybe that's what Bill needs. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I had that little thing that drops the tea into the boiling water at the right temperature slowly. Yeah, those things are nice. Well, I'm at a stage in my life where I am forced to simplify things as much as possible, in many cases, just to be able to do them. And a button marked with the desired object is always a good thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> as long as we have another bit of counter space to put it on. Well, as I was saying, we, we have yeah. no counter space at all. I mean, the biggest piece of counter space in our kitchen is the glass stovetop. And I have to plan my cooking around not making that hot if I need a lot of space. Mm. So. Yeah, that's that's important. Yeah. OK. Um, let's see what other one of the things that uh, another thing that people might or might not know. And since you hang around with us a lot, you probably do. Um, plantain leaves, which is the picture I put up on the uh, mm -hmm. event announcement. Those, if you rub them on a, a bee sting, it makes, or a bug bite, it makes the, the sting go away. And that, the looks on people's faces the first time they try it, they're like, wow, it worked. Uh, because there's Vinegar a dozen too. That, what? Vinegar. When I, I worked as a beekeeper uh, for the last uh, almost two years, and uh, my bee mentor, beekeeper mentor, she said, if you get stung by a bee or something like that, instantly flush it with vinegar. Mm. Because I always have a bottle of vinegar on me while I'm out with the bees. <laughs> right. But, but looking looking at your, around your right. feet, finding the planting. Uh -huh. I think there's some actual portable versions that, yeah. You can do yeah, that. Okay. this is what I do. This has, this has vinegar is protein. In it. The vinegar would denature it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The other thing that and, works too is the active and, ingredient commercial anti-sting thingies is ammonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, Once acid a, spray bottle, yeah, a spray bottle with vinegar and newspaper is the fastest way to actually clean a window without streaks. Yeah, now we're getting to other right, Just wait till it rains. <laughs> yeah. Um, that assumes you're able to clean the windows. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's what I... That's what I learned when I cleaned windows for a job is mm -hmm. we had a big bucket of vinegar and we would refill bottles like this and we spray down the window with the vinegar and then we rub it down with a newspaper and it came off streak free. Well, vinegar and brown paper, they used to wrap around your head if you had a headache. I know that's mm. an old remedy with the newspaper. I wonder if it changed functionality at all when they changed the inks to all soy-based inks. Yeah, because that what actually did origin that's uh, originated in the days of oil-based inks. And frankly, I haven't tested it, so I really don't know. Well, who has a newspaper these days? <laughs> well, there's um, that. We get one once a week. Here's the local. The two day two a day newspaper became. To Monday, what is it, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Bill? Yeah, that's what it's down to these yeah. days. Oh and my. the price. One. They'll, <laughs> Each day. And, and I've seen it on the newsstand on weekends in the Sunday edition. It, they'll put in an extra section of something, and then they'll charge 6 or $7 for the paper. So. Oh, well. And I don't want to schlep paper anymore. Right. <laughs> oh. Well, anyway. We're Oh, yeah, you had something, Bill. Well, I wanted to interject a background note because I've been following what Jen says about what you're doing here, and I get the gist of it. And I just wanted to point out, I come from a really different perspective these days because we got familiar with all of this. I had all the tarot decks, Norse runes, the whole thing. But for the last 20 odd years, I just kind of drifted away from it. And all I do is my Zen practice. But I wind up doing the same things. I just see the world a little differently yeah. and come up with different processes. Well, that's part of the reason for being here is to find out, all right, how do all these non-Zen people do this? And I've tried to stay closer to this type of life, but it's hard. We have a postage stamp lawn that grows plenty of plantain, but our landlord keeps a bottle of Roundup on the staircase going up down to the oh, front. Wild. Oh, don't don't eat any of that. Exactly. No. The town sprays the cracks in the sidewalk like once a year for insects and, and pesticides pests, and weeds. So oh. we can't use anything that grows on the within reach. apartment is on. 
whereas our backyard is basically a salad bar of plantain and <laughs> chickweed yeah. and a few dozen other yeah. things. So that's one of the big differences between where Bill and I live, which is very urban, and where mm -hmm. we live. Thank you. Well, I'm kind of in the midway. I'm suburban. There you go. So we need to figure out hacks that help us bridge that gap. Yeah, but but you know, for me, since I'm 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 rural and I'm almost and if I go out selling, I'm yeah in a place that has it, it has grass around. That's the type of thing I think of. Okay, we can go on to other things. Rose quartz. I got into crystals. Mm -hmm. uh, because one of my daughters, uh, you know, they in high school they keep assigning you, you these odd questions that you, um, you know, the things you have to write, and you like, do I have to write? So okay, fine, I'll write about something that's interesting. And she wrote about crystals and found that you could a headache remedy was to put some rose quartz into a glass of water, let it sit for ten minutes, and drink the water. And then the headache goes away. Well, most headaches will go away if you drink a glass of water. Um, I think that may have a lot to do with drinking a glass of water with your aspirin. But the um, it's still a a thing that that helps when you when you have a. Uh, but the rose quartz seemed to do a trick, so I started getting into crystals, as it were, and. Uh, discovered that kyanite, if you tuck that in the back of your pants, uh, directly next to your bad back, will uh, give you, will help with your bad back. And uh, there's, there's a whole lot of things that you can do with crystals, and I'm going to see if I can tap Sean there. <laughs> well, let's start with the kyanite. Um, which color, first off? Blue. Because there's like, okay, because there's also green and black and orange. I'm oh. familiar with two of those. I didn't know about the others. Yeah, well, basically, it makes sense that kyanite, kyanite is good for drawing out energy to begin with. Mm -hmm. And it has the advantage that it's one of these self-cleansing min minerals, so you don't have to worry about it overloading. If your kyanite explodes, maybe think you might want to see a doctor. But yeah. Well, that's, my, that's what I say to people who... I suggest they carry uh, hematite. If the hematite bursts, shatters, and you haven't hit it against anything, run. <laughs> I, I've had cheap hematite ring. I can't wear hematite rings because they always break on me. I think mm. mostly because they're basically hematite dust and sometimes a polymer oh. and or like hemolite, I think they call hemolite, that. Yes. Yeah, but it's the stuff they sell for the three dollar hematite rings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I find they, oh, I find all stone rings after a while break on me. So it's you know that's why I've gone over to only to either silver or stain, stainless steel. <laughs> Pewter breaks down after a while under my body chemistry. But yeah, I mean the the the. My two favorites are kyanite and black tourmaline, both of which oh, are yeah. self cleansers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have uh, what I re I've got to restrain them, but I've got my shield bracelets, which are alternating chunks of black tourmaline and double terminated quartz. So they, okay. So they basically soak up energy and redirect it. Currently, I'm wearing my usual collection, which includes a uh, an amber and jet bead necklace. That one soaks amber up negative. E yes, it's an old witch's thing. It soaks up negative energy, transmutes it into positive energy, and feeds it into you. Hmm. Indeed, jet used to be called witch's amber back in the day. Oh, and unfortunately, okay. jet is. Jet is getting very expensive because it's yes. the sources are limited in England, and it's gotten very popular again. Mm. Amber always has been rare. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, unless you know a little old lady from Gdansk who's uh, 
<laughs> grandson just picks it up on the beach for her. Right. Yeah. And then you wind up with nice Baltic amber. Yeah. Well, I recently got a nice eye-shaped piece from a, a, a trade for the alley in stereo. The How Central American Copal Am... Hmm? You go first, to Thor. Okay. How can you tell if the amber is real versus it being glass and not amber? Or okay. plastic. Or plastic. Or plastic. Real simple. Heat, heat up a needle. Press it against a spot that is not going to show. If it's real amber, you'll get a smell of pine resin. If it's yep. plastic... It will also melt, but it'll smell like northern awesome. New Jersey. Yeah. And if it's glass, <laughs> hey, listen, if it's I glass, used to live nothing in New will Jersey. happen. I know. <laughs> right. But yeah, the plot, because amber is actually a natural plastic. Yeah. And it's just the polymers that it, the, the dimers that it was made of. In one case, you're using pine tars. And in the other mm -hmm. case, you're using something from the uh, exxon mobile catalog so exactly but it is the easiest way to tell oh yeah also a lot of times price if it's too if it's really inexpensive it's probably plastic yeah good yeah. news is i get mine from a rock shop here in connecticut and i know that they are not going to sell me plastic amber in as opposed to um the real mm -hmm. stuff know your sources yep. yeah and if you ever see those coin-like reflective things in them, that's usually very suspicious of it being reheated, mm -hmm. treated in some way. Well, I heard somebody I have no problem with. I heard somebody yeah, mention cobalt too. I know. Mm -hmm. We have yeah, I mentioned leftover from the beach store days, a humongous necklace of cobalt amber mm -hmm. that. Uh, we still have, yeah. but uh, on an energetic uh, level, it works just as well as mm -hmm. um, as does the uh, the Baltic. It's just it's softer, so you have to be a, be more uh, careful right. with it. It hasn't, and partially that I think that comes because it comes out of the ground as opposed to out of the Baltic Sea, so it's well, been under partly, less pressure. Yeah, and it is the pressure and time because basically you can think of copal as slightly undercooked amber. Exactly. Because it has, it's younger. It's younger. It's definitely younger. Okay. But the stuff you got to worry about is what they refer to as African amber. A lot of times that is just big chunks of amber colored plastic. How many stones have we seen named Af African this and African that and African the other thing? And it turned out. You want the long list, list or the short list? <laughs> the short. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, but you know what I'm saying there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most <laughs> of them are ju are just ver varieties of the same um, agate and jaspers we find here in the United States and Europe. They just got dug out of a uh, pit somewhere in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, about the only know? African stone I know of that is actually from Africa is Tanzanite, mm -hmm. which is yeah. also getting rare as hen's teeth. Can you tell me what this irradiated thing is? Because now they're changing the colors of things by radiation. Oh, radiation. people oh, have yeah. been modifying stones for millennia. Um, basically, it's the same idea as you take relatively common amethyst. Mm -hmm. You chuck it into a campfire. And when the campfire is done, you pull out the pieces that haven't shattered and they've turned yellow, which mm -hmm. is a lot of the um, uh, the citrine we see. Citrine, yeah. See for sale cheap. It's, it's cooked it. amethyst. I've got one that still has little purple inclusions in it. And they keep uh -huh. trying to say, oh, that's a piece of ametrine. No, that's, that's where whoever dug this stuff out of the ground in Brazil, heated it up, and it couldn't, didn't quite get hot enough to drive away the little spikes of, uh, mm -hmm. of amethyst. I've seen pieces like that, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. once again, they, is, genuine they citrine get, is very expensive because it's the good stuff. They will hit light-colored amethyst with UV rays. 
and just like the old like the glass insulators from the telephone poles yeah it will turn purple in sunlight or uv rays yep. it, so yep. darker amethysts may have been treated with uv radiation mm. and that works for some other stones too to change the color uh, huh. i know i know um pliny the elder had a treatise on modifying stones on cooking agates to really? change the color yeah i need to see that unfortunately it disappeared along with um oh library well specifically it disappeared along with pliny oh. seeing he refused to leave his post in pompeii <laughs> mm. oh yeah uh, his villa which had most of his stuff written in it mm. Basically, it got caught by the pyroclast, and well, they know kind of where the foundations are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Somewhere well. was on the outs. But yeah, there was an entire. Apparently, it was very. They did it in India a lot, and still do. Hmm. To modify the colors of relatively common agates to make them look like oh, rubies and things. Really? Okay. Okay. Well, that that was a question that I figured I had the right people here to ask. Yeah. Uh, so getting back to some life hacks, I was thinking about uh, if you have a house full of spirits you don't like, uh, if you put out a small dish with just a few tablespoons of vinegar in it and a couple of slices of onions, that <laughs> will, that will uh, absorb negative energy like crazy. And uh, mm -hmm. it often gets rid of uh, annoying ghosts. It doesn't necessarily get rid of the uh, the 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 ghost as such. So if it's not a if it's a it's a friendly ghost, you, that probably isn't going to hurt anything. But if you have a friendly yeah. ghost and then an annoying one has come in, then you, that's a safe way of getting rid of the annoying. Well, thankfully, the only ghost in our house appears to be a cat, so <laughs> I haven't had to do that. And I do have a way of clearing out buildings rapidly of negative energies and spirits. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you, it's getting hard to find some of the parts because what you need are, you, you start with one of those old disposable cameras. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that you, I think you can still find them from wedding stores, but yes. um, you make sure you do not turn it on. You remove the paper or plastic shell you very carefully unsolder the strobe that they so nicely, nicely gave you. And then you make basically an electromagnet and solder it in, in its place. What happens is you then turn it on and you hear the capacitors whine and you know everything's there. And then Hopefully you do not are not wearing a pacemaker when you do it and you made sure all of the electronics are out of the area. You hit the shutter release. And create a and what EMP happens is, burst. Bingo, you've just about yes, an EM grenade. <laughs> you basically I, I, uh -huh. I, oh, I say he's got an electromagnet and a way to send a very short powerful pulse of electricity through it, which will make a nice EMP pulse. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is why you need to have all of your electronics out of the house before you do it, or you'll fry them. And your credit cards out of your wallet. Uh -huh. Well, that's yeah, why you do well, it on the old haunted house up on the hill. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you make sure you've left all of that in the car. So basically, this is for visiting the haunted asylum. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I would go in with a shoulder bag full of them and basically peek as I go. Kind of... Oh, you muted. Uh, you, you muted yourself, Sean. No, I think I did it. I was trying to. Oh, other people. There he is. All right, you go in with a bag of them. Go in with a bag of them, and I'm, it's kind of like watching an old fat, a World War II Soviet assault trooper going into a, a house with a bag of grenades. <laughs> you know, grenade first, then him. <laughs> okay. 
I know of another trick. Uh, when I went in, when I went into a haunted house, one of the things we did was one of my friends had a cowbell. Another of my friends had a uh, camera, a 35 millimeter that was empty, and they were just flashing the light. Mm. And then they would hit the cowbell. I don't know. It scared a lot of things out of the house. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Probably scare me. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is that a lot of people, we're so hung up on smudging and incense. People forget that you can clear it with sound that rattles. I'm married to an asthmatic. I'm not hung up on smudging. <laughs> no. But, no, Janet. But I, Jen as a matter of fact, there are probably, as far as I have been able to tell, not recently because I haven't been in crowds recently, but up to then, it looks seems like it's moving from like 15% to 20% of the people in the pagan community are getting allergic to white sage. And it's not because they're evil, it's because it's been over friggin' used. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I use, when I do burn sage, it's usually culinary sage, so I don't have to worry about that. I just mm. have to worry about the smoke giving Kathy an asthma attack. Yeah. Uh, and Je and so Jen and I, I definitely. Used, I didn't used to be able to use fragrances because they were so often artificial, but I've gotten better and I've gotten past a lot of that. So I'm starting to use essential oils mm. and have a oil warmer with candle that I use to disperse yeah. the scent. So I've been using, I haven't looked into what they're particularly good for dispersing other than their scent, but yeah. uh, I've been using lavender. I've been using peppermint. I've been using, I've got some actual ginger oil that's potent stuff. Yeah. And I'm starting to look into getting some other scents for specific purposes. Oh, purposes yeah, is, is you, you need to, uh, aromatherapy is not considered by many people to be, you know, spooky foo enough for us, but it's, uh, well, yeah. powerful. You get yeah, it. Oh, yeah. You go straight to the, your unconscious part of your brain and it gives you, I've got some stuff, you sniff it, and you grate it, Penzik. You, uh, <laughs> I, I put some on a, um, it's, it's a blend, and uh, you put it, I put it on a hanky, and I just pull that out and sniff it or let somebody else sniff it, and it's like, mm -hmm. wow, the energy you get. And I know peppermint's one of the things in it, but there- I started doing this because of the VR headset that I got, and there's a seasickness that goes along with motion sickness that goes along with a lot of VR when you're early into it. And I got the ginger so I could disperse it. Mm. I'm riding a roller coaster in VR, for instance. Mm. Yeah. And it helps a lot. This jar, yeah. This jar contains uh, uh, aromatherapy and essential oil. And it is the only reason why I'm still able to wear hearing aids because my ears have rejected almost all of the materials they use for ear mold. I have titanium oh. ear mold and I still react to them. Oh, this wow. essential oil, this essential oil and aromatherapy concoction that uh, Anne made is the only reason I'm still able to wear hearing aids today. Oh, bless you. That well, you know, you talk important. about sound and I keep thinking about how we keep brushing up again. I think sound is underappreciated for all that. Yeah. I, and it, it may be the reason I hate voice commands and stuff like that, because it just, first of all, you know, you, know, you, you, you say to your echo, you know, okay, do this and let all my neighbors know. And I remember way back at Heart Song many long years ago, I still have the damn chime out of self-defense, but we had a little hanging bar chime and I was coming in from another part of the store and Jen, you were, I think you were there with Linda and you smacked that chime just as I walked into the door. And if it wasn't for the door frame, it would have been on the floor because yeah. it was just like, that was like, oh, wow. Well, I'll just first yeah. go, sorry. You know? Yeah, but I find that I have a little app for my phone that uh, it chants ohm. And it's got this flock of Tibetans doing it. So this, the 
you can't believe human voices are making this sound. But one of the things they were careful to do is for each chakra, they chant at the right frequency for that chakra. So if you do a sweep, you start out real deep. And if you make it, and you can feel the change in the energy as the frequencies go up. So it's an, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, we have a collection of singing bowls between the two of us. I think we have close to 10. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we got one. And Mary Alice yeah. ha is, uses the tuning folk therapy. Uh, folk therapy. Yep. And mm. They're just, I love the singing bowls. Uh, and there's, there's just so many things you can do with sound that, that mm -hmm. we don't think of, which is, to me, kind of what tonight's show is about is that we don't think to do things that mm. we and you know when we hear it we say of course i knew that mm -hmm. uh i'm going to share a couple things kathy couldn't make it tonight but she put three things in the um uh in in the uh, group so that people would know them and the first thing she said is to ask for help which is mm -hmm. i think I, I should just read it uh, so that you get her words, but ask for energetic help. For today, example, uh, example today I posted, I'd like to ask for a little help, not urgent, but time sensitive. After a three year drought, I've been trying to publish my 10th book. The Swans of War uh, worked, I need it too narrow so I can't read it. Uh, uh, Worked like a fiend on it, but technical problems locked up in pub the publication process for two extra weeks. I'd like to have copies of it at on sale for Midsummer Fantasy Renaissance Fair one day, a one day event on July 3rd. But the backup has made time kind of tight. My life will not be blighted if it doesn't happen, but that is my goal. Would appreciate prayers, spells, Reiki, good energy, or the like. Uh, so having put that out, Number one, the proof copy arrives more quickly than predicted. Number two, proof copy is perfect and ready to go. Number three, the sales copies arrive more quickly than predicted and are in my hands by July 2nd latest. Thanks in, in advance for the assistance you spared me. It was posted at 3.01, the project mail time, seven to 10 business days. And notice it was put on a delivery truck in the next town over for, with a four minute turnaround. I'm still waiting, but I am sure going to go back and thank the folks who goosed this. Yes, you got to ask. Yeah. I constantly it say- It got here at six o'clock. The spell that you do not cast is the one that never works. The prayer that you do not make is the one that has never uh, answered. The You've got to actually ask. You've got to actually do it. It is not enough to say, oh, I am, I, I can do Reiki. I, I can heal myself. You got to actually send the energy through. It's not enough to have a radio mm -hmm. on your shelf. You have to click the, the, the hill. You've got to ask if you're going to get help from somebody, you have to ask for help. And if you're going to, if you've got a spell, do the darn spell. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't look at the, you cannot look at the, uh, the herb. Well, I guess in some cases you kind of can, or you, you have to smell it or, you know, make the tea or whatever, mm -hmm. but you got to do it. Um, here, here's a, uh, a, here's another one from Kathy. She does, says gratitude work. Every night, last thing I post five things I'm grateful for on Facebook, followed by good things I'm projecting. The gratitude keeps my mind on what's working and my energy positive, attracting things I'd like. The good things coming is an intention for what I want that energy to do next. And her third suggestion was, I do my best to pay attention to the words I'm using both out loud and mm -hmm. self-talk. I find choosing better words helps to shift reality to states that I'm happier with. A um, couple days ago was what you think on grows day. And that's uh, that's me, my little holiday background. But yeah, you the energy flows where attention goes is is the phrase that we that is often used. And, yeah, uh, it's interesting 
a lot of my Zen studies and some of the related stuff. One of the interesting things was uh, G.I. Gurdjieff once proposed an exercise as the most elementary lesson he could teach. And I have never succeeded at it. Go 24 hours without a single negative thought. Mm. Yeah. Nice that, goal, though. Yeah, oh, it's a wonderful goal, but you realize, and then that segues into the monkey mind concept where you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are a ADHD two-year-old and they will terrorize you if you let them. And that's, you know, that's any meditation, the fundamental thing is step back from your mind and don't let it control you. So, of course, then there was the other thing I was, somebody's comment inspired made me think, I once read somewhere, I think in Parabola magazine, somebody commented that all of the prayers in the universe that have ever been uttered boil down to a simple request. Help. <laughs> I, I've often said that I have three prayers. I have help, thanks, and a oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, a good a, that's where Bill originally got the concept from, was from you and Nick. But it's the, uh, yeah. It's, that's amazing. It's, but uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of other things that, that, that we might have, the, that people might have. Help. Okay, attracting money. This is something we all want to do. And Not one again. of the ones that I have found easy and Excuse me. to work is, is a spell where you write... <sighs> around the end, edge of a bill, uh, use whichever one you can find. It, you know, if it's a $20 bill, it's probably gonna have more punch than if you put it around a $1 bill, but use what you can. And then you spend it. And it, what you write is, all good things shall come to me and from me misfortune flee. As I will, so will it be. He, 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 he. <laughs> And that, I like the, that. I like that part is the important part because the that is the energy that powers it. The okay. others, the instructions on what's supposed to happen, and the he 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 is is what powers. It. And it's so crazy. that is that is a is a very um, useful, in my opinion. Um, uh, that that is one of the easiest um, spell written spells that I have uh, have heard of, and I will copy it and put it into the uh, chat okay. so people can okay. can because uh, I've only said it once, right? <laughs> uh, but has anybody else got any other? I mean, there's there's tons of them in from our childhood. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I know that in anybody Buddhism there. They have a ton of them. Um, they call them gathas. And when you're doing something, you think about what you're doing and you will that what you're doing should produce positive results and avoid negative results. And it can be anything. This was actually written by Fitch, not Han. And he talked about washing your hands or picking up the phone to call somebody. And you become mindful of your intention that way. So you can come up with zillions of these little things. And they're like three liners. Yeah, and from childhood, I mean, see a penny and pick it up and all the day you'll have good luck. Uh, see if a penny a, and let it lay and I can't remember the rest of it. That was, you'll spider, have bad luck. There you go. If a spider but, you should yep. slay, rain will fall upon that day. Yeah. But it, it's intent. Another, there's another thing uh, we use uh, which when we were doing a money spell is if you want something out of your life, there was a penny spell that you can do mm -hmm. that every day you say, for this good, I wish you happiness, but be that happiness far from me. And it works. A, a good way to keep bad things from coming back on you. Mm. Uh, right. another, 
another bit of magic I use is never let your purse ever get totally empty. Mm. And yeah. I have a, yeah. sm a small, just a mirror sunset or anything that I keep in there to multiply the money in the purse. Okay. Huh. And now I know the origin of a D and D. I'm sorry. Now I know the origin of a D and D uh, magical item, Bucknard's Everfilled Purse. And every night, you leave one coin in it, and in the morning, it'll be fifty coins. If you take the last coin out, the spell breaks. Well, it's always been my understanding that it's bad luck to give someone a wallet or purse without a coin in it or a bill or mm. some bit of money. Well, mm. there's also, you don't ever give anybody a knife. You may sell them a knife. So yes. if somebody's giving you a knife, you give them a penny so that they don't, mm -hmm. uh, so, it yeah. cut, so that it does not cut your friendship. Right. Mm -hmm. You lose a friend if you give them a knife so that you, they have to buy it from. That's mm -hmm. another thing is cutting. We are all bound to each other. Anything you touch, this is where psychometry comes from. Anything you touch is go going again. to have your energy attached to you. Any person you have come in contact with and, and the more energy you've exchanged, the more powerful that thing is. So if you have somebody annoying in your life, you get somebody who uses energy and have them cut the etheric, the thread or bond between you. This mm -hmm. is... And you can do that yourself. What you do is the yeah. same as what yeah. she does. You picture it, you visualize, and then you, if it will help you, get a freaking pair of scissors, the biggest ones you can find, or, or a knife, and cut through where you're visualizing it. Mm -hmm. This is not significantly different than the tradition. They say that in Salem, there is probably only enough room to store about three chickens in all the freezers in Salem because the, the freezers are full of spells. This traditional spell where if you're trying to stop somebody from doing harm to you, you put their name on the paper and you put it into a uh, uh, jar or into, you, you can freeze it in a, uh, the, the more efficient, which is I know, will put it in, in a uh, uh, ice cube tray mm -hmm. and, then, and then take that ice cube out and put it in a plastic bag in the freezer. Not, <laughs> takes up a lot less space <laughs> but uh that's the freezer trick and that's a good one. yeah but they joked <laughs> about it and uh i think it might have been dorothy morrison or trish telesco who found when she moved there was large collection but she figured it was okay to thaw out the all of these people who she had been binding for so, had, mm. for so long because she was leaving so it didn't matter anymore um, oh, simple thing. Uh, many people, there, there's Wiccan ways of, of making your water, hold, blessing your water. We find, I, I simply make holy water. I, I charge the water by simply pulling energy into myself, as I think we all know how to do, and exhaling it into the water um into the chalice whatever three exhalations of of focus energy breath will charge that water right up the difficulty is of course that the cats much prefer to drink charged water than <laughs> uncharged water <laughs> so you have to start charging the cat's water if you don't want them drinking off of your altar all the time <laughs> Hmm. Uh, why you're always trying blowing on your cat's water bowl yeah well, also, we, we have this big fountain and i keep now i'm suddenly thinking about okay i gotta charge a gallon of water to put in this thing well That's you have organic. to charge a cup and then pour it in because it will disperse within it yeah all right the, and it and it doesn't lose strength by being diluted no because your intent is that it won't oh okay fine all it's, right it's, it's like when you get water from a sacred well and you have it in a bottle and, and, you, and then you use it and then you add a little bit more water. There's always some of that water from the sacred mm -hmm. wells so it become it all stays sacred. Right, mm -hmm. like sourdough starter. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. Sourdough starter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another I, technique is knot work. You can use what? knots, knots, making knots on a string, like a bunch of mm -hmm. bracelet. You can 
Uh, mm -hmm. There was a friend of mine who did a healing spell and they basically made a friendship bracelet imbuing all their healing energy into the friendship bracelet. And then that person wore the friendship bracelet on their wrist. Okay. Oh, I, I haven't told you this one. I got, uh, I, I got this one from um, one of Serge Kahili King's books. Uh, to, it makes a, uh, what he calls it is a ma mana plate. Is if you take a sheet of plastic wrap, which is essentially from, uh, it, it, it's from organic material. And then you put it on a sheet of uh, foil, aluminum foil, whatever. And then you fold it over on itself three times then you have alternate layers of organic, inorganic, and organic, inorganic. And if, and you can just keep that. And if you put it on a, a the, he, he taught his kids, he was just come in and get, where's the mana plate? And they just put this piece of alternating uh, plastic and, and uh, foil on, on a, uh, if you just put it on your, uh, wound for for a few for a minute then it'll then you can just put it away no I I an orgone accumulator or go no, you, you need a tinfoil hat no oh, a capacitor yeah, it's, yeah. But well it, it actually <laughs> works best if you use uh wax paper as opposed to plastic i've discovered you get more of that. Okay, that does sound better but it's you know yeah there's there's a lot of cute little things uh the thing is thinking of things that we said anybody have Little, uh, the one I thought I was thinking of, squat, squat, we love you a lot. Help us find a parking spot. Uh, <laughs> which, was great squat, I just squat. talked to the air and asked the parking fairies. <laughs> yeah. Cassie just asked her angels. I'm driving. She's the one finding the parking spot for us. Or we stalk somebody coming back from the, coming out of the uh, shopping center. Mm. There's uh, just so many things. What you think of doing them, um, and the, the thing is, and we're we're a bunch of people who have picked up on these things. I met a woman once who had one of those little tiny things you hang on your walls, like a dollhouse, fairies, mm -hmm. and it was full of little flowers and miniature furniture and crystals and things. Mm -hmm. And if things went um, went missing around her house, of course, you blame it on the fairies, right? Because they made it invisible. So she would take plastic, clear plastic wrap and put it over that house, and they couldn't get in anymore until they gave her back her scissors or whatever she wanted. It's like, okay, plastic wrap stops fairies. Does this make sense? The only thing that makes sense about it is it's your intent. Exactly. You can charge almost well, any yeah. intent. Well, any any material component is nothing but a way to focus the energy of the caster. And Winnie asked an interesting question in chat there. Yeah. Okay. Pine essential oil is drawing me lately. What's it useful for? Thank you for seeing that. I had the participant list up where I couldn't see the question. Mm. Um I don't remember what pine essential oil is for. Is anybody? And pine is kind of a generic term. Pine uh, is for cleansing. Yeah, pine, pine, yeah. pine is for cleansing, my right. daughter says. Okay. Uh, I could believe pine, that. Which makes sense, pine salt. That's where I Google it. Because uh, you know, this, is, this, is a, this is our very powerful magical tool is we can look up almost any. Oh yeah, really. <laughs> and. Uh, but I the know. idea there, when I, they say I, essential oil rather than just like distilled oil, I don't know if there's a difference really. I think that is a, that that's how they get essential oils. Is, mm -hmm. but, well, I, uh, think, I think when you're dealing with pine, distilled pine oil would be turpentine. I think that's cooked. Probably. I think it's whether you're using pine oil or you're using pine sap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm I'm afraid, Millie, uh, Winnie, that we're just I'm, we're going to fail you here. We haven't got enough people to ask it on the uh, Changing Times, Changing uh, Worlds uh, uh, group. group it's a group lot more. Page, yeah. There's 400 people there that might be have something. Yeah. Uh, 
now we've all got <laughs> interested and we're all going to go out running around trying to figure this out now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> But but it, we are now coming to the end of the, the hour, and I want to thank everybody for all of their their very helpful things. This is the kind. This is sort of what happens at changing times, changing worlds, uh, when we have physical uh, uh, cons in in the hallways. <laughs> yeah. So we all start talking and exchanging our experiences or in the and what suite. we've done. Mm, yeah, and then and you can get it with coffee and and, and snacks. <laughs> but I like that uh, option. Yes, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it safe and one more year. We well, I, I really didn't expect Biden to do as well as he had. So I'm going to to remind everybody to uh, tell your friends about changing times, changing worlds. It this year it is going to be uh, Monday through Friday, um, November eighth to fourteenth. Monday through, uh, Monday through Friday in the evening, sorry, I've got to finish the thought, and Saturday and Sunday all day long with panels and classes and breakout rooms. And we are going to have people talking about really interesting things. And everybody is psychic. Pretending that we aren't is like one of the and or tying one hand down. We can do so much more once we actually accept that this stuff is real. And uh, so psychic ability is like muscle. If you exercise it, it grows. If you don't, it atrophies. Yeah, and a lot of people are say, think they're not psychic because too many people told them that it was impossible when they were kids. But when you get mm -hmm. older, you discover, wait a minute, why this this is if I try this, it works. And you do it more and more, and it starts working more and more. So uh, that's what we need to do. And that's the name of the con is because if we can get to the point where the whole world accepts this, we will stop being quite so. <laughs> oh, just think about all the healing we can do, <laughs> for goodness sakes. Think about how. No offense. Can... I'm thinking about all the havoc that could happen. It the more we There's, understand each other, the the uh, the better off I think we'll be. So, um, yeah, I'm discovering that there are people who are literally violently allergic to the concept of understanding other people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we can't escape our biology, and I've been thinking about this a lot, going way back to our 